Hello my lovelies, today is a little bit of a haul, a little bit of a chat, a little bit of a show and tell. It's a bit of a mix match of everything. <laughs> um, basically me having a chat with you, showing a few things that I have purchased um, in case you're interested and um, also some ideas of things that I'm going to be doing going forward in September or so. Um, yeah, this is it. So the first thing I want to show you is, well, this isn't something I bought recently, but it's something I've had for a while and I've just started using it and I love it. It is the Yasutomo Nori paste and it's great for like book arts and things like that because it's a slow, staying, a, 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 a slow drying starch adhesive. It is um, non-toxic and it's perfect for papers and tissues etc and I have decided that this is particularly good for something that I'm going to be doing next month. So um, I didn't really want another big tub of it because I've got this big tub I've tried it out and so I've only got down that much of it so I've not really used a ton of it but I will be using a fair amount um, in September so that needs to be said and I thought I need maybe to have some portable variations of this to take with me. Now in the journal shop they were offering something similar. This is also um, starch paste in various forms so I got one of each because I want to try them all. This one looks like it's going to be good to go in my art kit um, because obviously it's in the tube form, squishy, easy to carry and it's just it's kind of, look, it's kind of just like a a pasty glue. It's a bit like um, wallpaper paste, but it's a starch, starchy paste rather than the cellulose paste. And uh, this is a Yamamoto sticking paste. So I thought I will try that. That's really good. Nice and squishy, very tactile. I like that a lot. Um, and while I was there, there were these two pots as well. And I don't know if there's any difference in them. Um kind of think they're both Yamamoto <laughs> but this one was pretty <laughs> this one was the pretty one uh, it's 100 grams of um, a starch paste in a pot pot form cool so that's this big boy is 10 ounces so this is like 100 grams it's about four ounces ish ish so a lot smaller easier to carry around also, what I was thinking was if this is open for a long time, it might start to go, you know, sort of um, dry up and go weird. So I thought if I've got a smaller one, I can move from that one into this one, if you see what I mean. And it's just pretty as well. <laughs> and I'm a sucker for pretty things, especially pretty Japanese things. So this is also Yamo Yamato glue as well. And I think this is... This is Yamato, I'm not sure, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, it was from the journal shop so it was in the same area as all the other glues and this one is 70 grams so it's even smaller than this one but what this one has, it's got a little piece of paper there to keep it all in place, it's got a little glue spreader in the top, I thought how handy is that, that's very cool. Not that I haven't got glue spreaders, but if you're out and about and you just want to stick something down. But I thought it was a good shout, so I got all these things. <laughs> Hopefully I am going to be using quite a bit of it throughout the next month. So uh, yeah, watch this space for what I'm doing with that. You might not be able to find out at, at certain points, but you will at the end. <laughs> but I will be using this. Uh, good for sticking papers down, obviously. Good for tissue papers, very delicate papers. Uh, slow drying, water soluble, repositionable and acid free. And also very, very safe. So if you're using it with kids, um, it's really safe. You can put it on your clothes and it washes out, basically. So useful for me because I am messy. Right, the next thing. Ooh, yes. Now, this is related to the scroller box we had. Um, I went on eBay and somebody was selling this second hand in really good condition, by the way, can I say. And it was the Urban Sketcher because I got really into it. And I've also got a Domestica course that I am 
in the process of looking at other minute so many things on my brain at the moment <laughs> but i thought i would get this book because it you know i love i love books anyway but this one let me move these glues out of the way before they become a hazard let's see around my left um so i thought this would be nice for me to look through and get some ideas of different techniques i mean the marker pens you had are amazing but there's also other things that you can use and this is the Urban Sketcher by Mark Tarot Holmes, if anybody's interested in this. Because I've been out and about a fair bit, I thought this would be a good shout. I am kind of one for jumping in with both feet. <laughs> so um, you should be proud of me because I didn't actually buy the Urban Sketch set from Colt Pens, which I nearly did. It was in my basket but i didn't buy it i thought no no you've got enough stuff to start with so i thought this would be nice to see and look through and get some ideas from um on how to go about doing more urban sketching because being out and about and seeing all these beautiful buildings that i have this year it would have been nice to spend some time and draw them and i've done quite a bit of travel probably will be doing quite a bit more travel so i thought do you know what let's give it a go so take your supplies everywhere all you need is a little tiny three inch by five inch pocket sketchbook a pencil and eraser well you know i'm not going to just take that don't you <laughs> but it links onto something else i bought as well so um so get started as a daily sketcher and uh, i always advocate that if you do a bit of daily drawing you get better and you do it's a to it's muscle memory graphite tools so um moleskin paper um, mechanical pencils that's all you really need demonstrations ideas of um what you can use the illusion of depth all these things i need to know um not necessarily use but it's nice to have a good working knowledge of these things <laughs> pen and ink tools i love pen and ink so i've already got loads of pens and loads of inks <laughs> we're sorted on that score uh, i've also got a load of watercolors as well if they ever mention that but the three pass sketch so you've got the scribble which is your first pass and then you've got what's the next one? <laughs> oh, third pass. I must have uh, missed the second pass somewhere along the line. Anyway, presuming that is all in here. Second pass there it is. Calligraphic line drawing. Um, so I just thought this would be nice to go along with the domestic course that I'm taking. I can't remember the name of the guy I'm doing the course with, but on Instagram he's known as House Sketcher. Um, so if you look for House Sketcher on Instagram, you'll be able to link to the domestic course through that. So I do remember that part of it. Brain being as it is, a bear of very little brain. So that's that one. Put that one out of the way again for a minute. Next, I went on to Hobbycraft because one of the things I wanted to do involved some book binding, simple book binding. And I was watching a lady the other day and she was using this Hobbycraft Premium Artist Pad. It's an A, I think she was using the A4 one, but they only had the A3 one in stock when I was looking. So I bought this and it came, look, dent, dent, dent. Not only that, it's gone through to all the pages. So I was kind of sad about that. Um, I placed a whole order with them. Um, I'll show you what else I got as well. I got these sea white canvas sheets because I want to do some um, small abstracts on canvas paper. Not specifically on uh, a canvas, but on the canvas paper. And this is cotton canvas sheets. So I've got two pads of that. This is rather lovely. Proper canvas. And it's quadruple primed for oils, acrylic and mixed media. So I've got two of those. And while I was there, I got um, two neutrals in my 
acrylic paints because um, I have got some but this one's running down so I've got a buff titanium to replace one that's gone and this neutral grey and I thought they're great as neutrals I will have those in as well so this whole thing came from Hobbycraft I had it delivered could have nipped out to the local Hobbycraft too lazy to go so I thought no <laughs> you know what I have it arrived dented and dinged so I got onto Facebook and I went onto the Hobbycraft page and I sent them a message saying look I sent them some pictures and whatever you and said everything else was fine I said it was just this great big pad that literally came and now I'm finding it's going to be hard to use because it's got big dings all the way through it's even got dents on the corners and things anyway cut a long story short um the next day I get a lovely message back saying this is not how we want to present ourselves to you we're really sorry that it's arrived in this way we've replaced the whole order and sent it by express delivery and I think that's worthy of a praise for Hobbycraft. Their customer service is second to none and they have a sense of humour. And um, that is well appreciated in these parts, I can tell you. If somebody's got a sense of humour, they will go a long way. <laughs> but I thought that was great. So I haven't actually got the second parcel yet, but it's on its way and it's going to be everything that was in my order. Even though all the other things, which I did say to them, were all fine. They replaced the whole thing so um i cannot complain to that but watch this space <laughs> i'll tell you how it turns up if the big pad turns up dented and dinged again i will not be best pleased <laughs> next i went on to cowling and wilcox and i bought myself a job lot of sketchbooks because they were a super super cheap price <laughs> so i got three of these little 9 by 14 sketchbooks these are the royal talons art creation sketchbooks and i just love them to to pieces i think they're great and these square ones i've got an idea for this is going to be to do with the paste that i've just bought and everything so these are going to be involved in that in some way so there is a plan for them and i thought these are ideal for like taking out on my urban sketching jaunts um so i got three of those because they were such a super good price and three of those uh so i think i'm, st I'm stocked up on notebooks and sketchbooks at the moment <laughs> really super sorted on that account next this is all zoe hartist's fault i have to blame her <laughs> and annie you're not getting away scot free either uh, both of them been doing some wonderful things with their distress inks um on their channels so i'll leave dis links in the description down below to both of them uh, they're always you know on the discord channel as well um but um I succumbed and bought myself um, some of these smaller distress inks, uh, which has seemed like a nice little pack. I've got Twisted Citron, Hickory Smoke, Blue P Blueprint Sketch, and Ground Espresso. And I thought, I'll have some of those. And I think these were a very quick, um, early in the midst of the morning's Amazon purchase. <laughs> So I've got those to try out as well and see what I can do with these. So they are something else that I got. What else? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. There was the matter of the small Jackson's order <laughs> that I got. Um, so the first thing I got was a very crinkly package. I do apologise. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Do you hate crinkly sounds? Come out, come out, come on, come on. I'll leave it out now. Um, it's a Princeton Square Wash Neptune half inch brush, which I still need to get the, I need to give it a wash and get the sizing out of it. But that's what I got for that one because I'm very short on these um, square washes, square brushes, little, little brushes. So I got one of those. In the little boxy box, we have a variety of stuff. <laughs> Two packing peanuts. Aren't they lovely? Very expensive items. Um, I got myself a uh, Holbein permanent white gouache 
I'm going to probably stick this in my sketching bag because I'm always, it's always handy to have some permanent white for highlights, etc. And, and what have you. Um, I'll come on to that one in a minute. Then, my love of Roman Schmoll paints continues and I got these uh, three half pans. This one is deep green gold. This one is autumn green, which you can see the samples on there already. It separates out into this beautiful green and gold. It looks like a mix of that one and, and something else, doesn't it really? But I got that one. That one was a Natasha Newton moment. <laughs> I will blame Natasha Newton for that one. And this one is sap green. Sap green is always good green. And I, I want to put together a green palette. That's another thing that I'd like to do of just, just pure greens. I know, I know I've got my Sea of Decay palette, which has got a lot of greens in it. But this is going to be like a foresty kind of greeny what have you have my autumn palette <laughs> i'll show you that one if i can find it it's this beauteous one here i don't know whether i'll be able to fit them in here but i'll have a look um this is the autumn palette with all the different mixes of things i've got in here i've got all kinds of stuff in there but i think it's kind of chock-a-block <laughs> yeah yeah it's full um so i think i'm gonna have to start myself a greens palette uh to put these in because i really want to try these out as well in something nice and autumnal so let me pop that back over now i'm just causing havoc over this side now it's good you can't see this side of my desk it's horrific the last thing i got from Jackson's was this Sennelier oil pastel. I am loving the oils at the minute. And this one is a uh, gold. It's beautiful. It's rather lovely. And it's just, let me show you. Look how creamy and golden shiny that is. So that was the last little thing that I got from Jackson's. The brush was the most expensive thing out of these <laughs> I bought. It was the fair price, but I I do rate the Princeton brush brushes and I thought, you know what, I'm going to get it. So I did. So that's that little escapade. <sighs> another purchase. Well, I've got another one on its way that hasn't arrived yet from Paper and String, which is basically just some felts that I ran out of. And... Some more of my beautiful glitter remnanty fabrics that are coming in and some flat quarters of some very quirky fabrics <laughs> but that hasn't arrived yet it's on its way what did arrive is this oh god <laughs> just flapping bits of mohair everywhere it is this beautiful beautiful mohair um that i got from um, mohair bear fabrics or christy bears i don't know how they i think the christy bears are the bears that they make mohair bear fabrics is kind of a side thing it's pure mohair on a woven background and this means that i'm going to be making a couple more bears um i recently sold one of my bears um that went out this week and I made a deal with myself that I wouldn't buy any more mohair until um, I ha had only one bear left in my shop. And now I only have one like traditional mohair teddy bear left in my shop. I bought myself some more mohair. So that's, <laughs> that's that. And it's this beautiful, it's kind of, it's called tangerine. But I would say this is more, it's like a, I don't know, peachy. It's kind of a peachy, salmon-y, peachy colour. So it's just beautiful and I decided that this is going to be my next couple of bears that I make is going to be from this. Um, so watch this space and I'll show you when I've made the first one and um, yeah, exciting times, exciting times. So that's most of my purchases accounted for. I haven't mentioned the wool. <laughs> I've also... 
I've also ordered some wool for um, making some scarves with out of granny squares and that should be imminently here soon so I'll be making some of those and the other thing was an order for some of my DMC threads you know the ones I use for slow stitching I just placed a big order of things that I haven't got there or that I've run out of <sighs> so yeah it's been uh, catching up on bits I've missed out on but also things these are all going to be used she said they, these are all going to be used uh, first of all I think we could do a little bit of swatching of some of the things that I bought just see I want to see what these greens look like so let's let's swatch them out shall we okay I had a little bit of a do with my autumn gold autumn green should I say it had stuck to the little plastic on the inside so um never mind Right, okay, so I'm rinsing all the sizing out of this brush. Grab myself my rag, clean my brush with. Okay, let's try this deep green gold. Looks rather beautiful and is rather beautiful, can I say? Let's just make that. Oh, yes. I am liking that. Let's move my dirty rag out of the way. That is really nice. I'm in love with kind of a green gold. I've got the Daniel Smith green gold, um, which I adore. This is kind of more mustardy, I think. Oh, I like that. That's nice. Let's, let's take it in a little bit more. Lovely. Okay, on to the Naughty Boy paint. Let's go on to that one now. <laughs> clean my brush out. I'm going to try and get some out of this plastic. Look, see it's stuck on the inside. So I'm going to save this and use it because it will not be wasted. But this is the autumn green. It better be as lovely as I expect it to be. Oh yes. Yeah that's rather nice isn't it? Ooh I like that. That's lovely. And when it dries, it kind of separates out. And you can see it kind of separating now, or I can, um, into the two, like, yellowy, greeny beauteousness. So I shall forgive it <laughs> for being awkward. And try out the sap green now. Sap green's a good one to have anyway. If especially I'm going to do a green palette, you can't do a green palette without sap green. And that's a glorious one. I love it. Beautiful, beautiful sap green. So I'll be adding more into my greens palette at some point. Because um, I do enjoy it a great deal. And I've gone all out on greens for some reason. Let me put the names of these in. I can find my pen. <laughs> I have 600 pens on this desk. Here we go. Right, okay. So this one is the deep green gold. Heck, and this one's not working now. Deep green gold. And it's the Aquarius Rains by Roman Schmal. It's got his name on the front there. I can never, never remember how to spell it. It's S Z M A L. There we go. So that's the deep green gold. Then this one is autumn green, and I can see that it is separating out beautifully. <laughs> That's the same again. Blue. And then we have sap green. And they're all the Roman Schmal Aquarius ones from Jackson's. And my paint waters are going to have a lovely shade, I have to say. Clean off this brush. And the brush is, I like, I like this brush a lot. I really want to get some more of these Princeton brushes because um, I do enjoy using those. Okay, so we did those. We might as well have a little go at this Sennelier boy in here. 
this gold one. Let's put him there. Ooh, that's nice and creamy. They do a whole range of metallics, um, the Sennelier ones. They're so soft and creamy. And that's really shiny as well. That's going to go in beautifully with my oil pastels, which I've been really enjoying. That's lovely. I um, can't remember which gold it was I got. <laughs> and the box that it's in is not the box um, from the thing, but I'll try and see if I can find my little listy somewhere and it's it's a gold anyway it's i don't think it's um i don't think it's a deep gold but it's very beautiful it is no good me trying to swash out this permanent white gouache it's a permanent white gouache <laughs> whole bang gouaches are amazing anyway but let's have a little look at the colors of these so these are the neutrally paints i need a different brush for these squidge that back in uh, this is the neutral grey PBO opaque paint. I'm going to use this boy just to spread it with. Easy clean. <laughs> so it's a nice grey, a nice neutral colour to pop into all the other beautiful colours I want to be using very soon. So let's write that one in. So that's the Sennelier, gold oil pastel. This one is PBO, it's a studio acrylic in neutral grey. And just by way of showing, this is the uh, buff titanium, which I have of already, but it's running out. I did a wand making session last year, and I think the rest of it got hammered for that for painting wands. <laughs> there is a tutorial on that, by the way, if you're interested, if you want to make some wands for yourself <laughs> or for anybody else. Um, yeah, so pop back into my playlists and you'll find a tutorial for making a wand. Um, that one is Buff Titanium, so PBO. Buff Titanium. I can't spell. No. <laughs> oh dear. Right, we're all good now. Wash that off. So again, another good neutral to be using. Now I want to have a look at these distress inks. So I'm going to open it up and then um, we'll try and swatch them down the side here. The camera wasn't working again. Um, that's the blueprint sketch. This one is Twisted Citron. Get the lid off. Just kind of swiping them here. I'll try and get them with the brush in a minute as well. This one is Hickory Smoke. Ooh, that's nice. I like that. I've <laughs> not left any room, have I? Stupid. Let's put some up there. Let's put some ground espresso up there. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Right, grab a different brush. <laughs> I'm trying out all the brushes today. Let's, I, choose, I choose you, brush. So these you can... Um, use in many different ways. If you look at Annie and Zoe's um, pages, uh, pages, YouTube channels, uh, they will be taking you through more techniques. Annie has just recently done some with some chickens. So go and check that one out. That's rather cool. I like that blueprint sketch. Well, oh, that's rather cool. Twisted Citron. Very nice. And this one is a hickory smoke. Ooh, I like that. That's nice. I might have to get some more of these. <laughs> I have got a set of distress inks, I do believe. Um, 
I got some when I was doing a a book and I was using it for the grimoire. Hmm. Yes, I'll have to search those out. I have got some more of those. Anyway, that's a swatchy session all done for those um, of my latest artistic purchases, <laughs> apart from that permanent gouache there. I have also <laughs> just remembered something else. I have also ordered some more Neo Colors, no, Neo Color 2s um, in a specific set, but I'll go through those when they arrive. But yeah, that's it. Nice little swatches. Okay, so it is another day. I have other things to show you. <laughs> um, what am I going to show you first? Oh, yes. I mentioned about the Neo Color 2s that I had ordered and they have arrived. And these are the joy. They are the Bayer Rebay um, warm colours. She does a set that is cool colours as well, but I have got all of the ones that she's got. <laughs> Um, already in my stash so I didn't really need to get those and I've got a couple of these as well but I thought it was such a nice set and I wanted the tin so that I can take this out with me um, with a selection of these beautiful Karen Dash Neocolor 2s in them and I'll just show you a swatch that I've done. So these are all the colours. It's a really rough sketch. I've got rose, apricot, salmon, orangish yellow, Sahara yellow, golden ochre, flame red, Chinese green, English rose and umber. And that's all of those colours in there. And they are blooming lovely. I have to say a really nice, if you look at that, what a lovely palette of colours that is. And then the cool ones... I think I did find those two later on as well. That's mainly some of the cool ones there without those two there, but we're not looking at those at the minute. But I did do a swatch of mine of the other set of these that is available um, as um, a, a limited edition collection by Bayer Bay. And on the inside, there's a, a little QR code. I don't know if you can see that there, but you can click that and that will take you to an online class so that was also worth having as well so i've got those to have a play around with because i want to do some autumn autumn inspired stuff so that's going to be that so my paper and string order also arrived with my felt so i've ordered a roll of black and I don't remember what colour this one is. It's like a navy, a navy. It's not what I call a navy especially. But yeah, it's like a dark blue. So those two I'd run out of. But while I was there, <laughs> I, I think I mentioned the fat quarters and I just thought I'd show you. Sorry about the rattling of the cellophane, but look at these beauties. There's eight of these for £15 and I thought it was a really good deal. So we've got this one. Have this one with the acorns and the leaves on it that I really liked. There's this one with some hearts on it, which is lovely. This is the one I bought it for, which is the apples and pears with faces on. <laughs> There's a little stars with faces on. And this one, which I think is a stalk, maybe. I think a stalk pattern. Not sure. Let me know. This one with tigers on it, which is also lovely. And then this one with red pandas on, which I absolutely adore. So all of those for £15. That's eight fat quarters. I thought it was a really good deal. So that was from paper and string. Also managed to get some remnants of, <laughs> of my beautiful shiny bits. They have these in store that you can buy lots of different colours. I mean, st instead of buying um, rolls, which I also have, and sheets, which I also have, <laughs> then you can buy these little remnant pieces, which are handy. So lots of things for me to have a go at there. I went on a little visit to Totnes over the weekend. It's kind of Friday, not the weekend especially, but Friday is kind of the weekend anyway and I went into my favourite Oxfam uh, secondhand book sh shop and got some treasures from there so the first thing I got was this 
absolutely looking brand spanking new Needlepoint Cats book by Julie Hazler. And um, it really does look like it's not even been used once. But there's all these beautiful, beautiful Needlepoint and cross stitch cats in there, which I was really wanting this on this peeping Tom. I love him so much. And I'd like to do him. And some of them are in the DMC stranded cottons and some of them are in the um, the tapestry wools. But it's just a beautiful book. So I was so pleased to find that. Needlepoint Cats by Julie Hazler. The next thing I found um, on our Discord channel, we have a lot of uh, our lovely Antipodean friends. So we've got Australia and New Zealand. And I found these Australian animals and birds in patchwork. And I thought that was awesome. It was one ninety nine. It was just two pounds out. It was one ninety nine, and it's got all these beautiful animals and birds in patchwork. And I really want to do something with that because it's so cool. So it's got lots of. Cool. Also in there, I found a lot of these photocopied pieces. It's strange what you can find in second hand books, isn't it? When you go and have a look. Um, this was printed in nineteen eighty six. So it's quite an old one. It's a Margaret Rolfe book, but I was quite happy to get hold of that. And then, uh, digging around, I found this Indian designs book. So if you use quilt patterns, needlepoint, applique machine, and hand embroidery, closing, tripanto, fabric painting, projects, and multiple other uses. And I think that was two forty nine. Yes, it was. But it's all these beautiful patterns. Look at these. I love this. <laughs> love him. The Aztec parrot. Kate, I'm thinking of you when I'm looking at this guy. <laughs> um, Kate and I have a thing about Norwegian blues at the minute, so <laughs> she gives me a smile when I saw that one in here. But I'm thinking this is going to be dead useful for things, you know, going forward. So that was my book haul. The other thing I got was some wrapping paper, which is from, um, this is a Matthew Williamson design. It's from, I think it's Penelope Tom's. I think that's the name of the shop in Totnes. And they are beautiful wrapping papers. But I want some to make some journal. I'm going to make some um, book making. So I'm going to have a little go at making myself a little journal. And I thought this would be great for the the cover, the paper that goes on the cover. So I got two sheets of that. <laughs> I'm getting a full run through of everything I got this weekend. Um, let's put this elastic band back on here because I want to keep this safe so it doesn't get creased. I should really flatten it out, but I'll find another time to do that in a, in a while. So whilst I was in Penelope Tom's, I picked up some tissue paper, which I love. This is, um, I use this in my Etsy shop for wrapping pieces up. Um, this is a V&A one, and it's a William Morris, The Strawberry Thief, which is one of my favourite things to look at. I love William Morris designs anyway, but The Strawberry Thief is like a well-known variety. But also this, which is the folk art folk birds and this has been my wrapping paper of choice for past year or so in Etsy so if you bought anything from me um, if it could be wrapped it's probably been wrapped in something like this which I, I love so much it's this is a Sarah Campbell design one you get four sheets of tissue paper in there it's nice big sizes so I use this quite a bit in the packaging so grabbed that as well my wool order arrived and so I set two straight away because I can't resist into making this scarf that I'm going to make for um, autumn time. Also going to make some for presents as well. So I'm getting going on that really quickly. Um, and it's the Signet Sprinkles Pop in a chunky. And I got two different colorways, but I'm very tempted to go back and get some of the other ones as well. Um, this was it's 100 grams acrylic. And it's in the shade of lavender honey, which is this. This is the one that I'm doing at the moment. But I also got this one as well, which is called confetti, which looks quite fun. But they've got about, well, actually all of the other colorways I could go with. 
<laughs> because they're so nice and it's just such nice and quick because it's a chunky it crochets up really quite quickly and this is a pattern that I got from the I think it was a signet website actually I'm sure it was it was like a free pattern it's just a, basically a basic granny square but because it's in this variegated wool it knits up or crochets up so quickly and each scarf is 13 of these squares and then um, I think I managed to get nearly six squares out of one ball so you're gonna need about three of these balls um, in fairness unless you make a short scarf if you can make a short scarf um, then that would work as well but what happens is when all the 13 are um, crocheted then you I'm doing a join as you go when you've got 13 you stitch the last two together so you've got like a circular thing that you can wrap around um, so yeah that's another project I've got on the go at the minute but I'm trying to get some Christmas presents <laughs> in the bag should I say ready to to be given away um, in the mix of everything else that I'm trying to do <laughs> so the wool order came through so which I was very happy about so and this is all from Wool Warehouse, by the way. And somewhere I have another thing that I got from them as well. World of Wool also do um, <laughs> sewing threads, which is like, um, it's just like candy to me. I love them. So I got all these autumnal threads. I, I found that I had lost or can't find all my brown ones so I bought a couple of those for another thing that I'm doing I got a couple of variegated ones because I like variegated yarn. Know, these, these are all the DMC8 cotton pearls these ones that I got here so yeah I got four variegated and five no six um, plain colours in an autumn-y kind of a... Well, it looks quite nice together as a colour palette, doesn't it? <laughs> and then, the last thing I got was the Diamante Grand. I've used this one up totally. Haven't got this one and haven't got this one. So I got those three of the Diamante Grands for my embroidery. <sighs> so that's that. Um, all the purchases and second-hand purchases and everything else I got. It seems like quite a lot, but I had got some um, some things that I'm going to make for these. So there's it's definitely a method in my madness for all the things that I've got. Also, update on the Hobbycraft one where I said it came damaged. They replaced everything in my order uh, without question. It all, I got double everything that I'd ordered it came the next day how's that for service so well done to hobbycraft and their amazing customer service team can't speak highly enough for them right if you've been hanging around on my channel for some time you have probably seen the cat cushions that i did last week and i am now um i've put a little addendum to that up there that's a free one it's for anybody who wants to do the spooky cats such as this guy so you've got a little sheet on there with like um, pumpkins, ghosts and stars and what was the other thing? Bats. So there's a little spare thing there if you want to make your spooky cats up because I, on the original pattern I only had the autumn leaf one, which was this guy. But I've done a little one with all these little bits on as an extra. So if you want to pop over to my Kofi, that is there already, so you can download that. And I've got an idea for another plan coming up to do with a similar kind of thing, but um, watch this space because that'll be coming up shortly. Um, what else have we got coming up soon? We've got Inktober coming up, uh, not, not September obviously, but preparing for. Um, so preparing for Inktober is something else we're going to be doing on the channel and um, lots of other things anyway this video is going to be long enough so i'm going to leave you here but i'll be back here shortly with something else to show you bye for now and have a really good weekend